Hey dancers, as promised today we are going to be tackling how to improve our extensions. This is part two and in part one we looked at the biomechanics, the different components that make up our développé, devant and à la seconde. So if you haven't seen that yet, I would highly recommend that you check it out first because we discuss a few of the principles, especially around gripping the hips and the quads and why we actually need to use those muscles. So have a quick look and then come back and do these exercises. Now, if you want, you can grab some props. This is mainly for one of the exercises, so it's not essential, but I feel like most of us will have at least one of these lying around. So you can use ankle weights. You can use a loop band or a thera band, just tie it in one big loop. Or if you have a long thera band, I'll show you how we're gonna use it in a second. But to start with, put your prop to the side and come down onto your hands and knees. Right, I just had to take my t-shirt off so you can have a better picture of what's happening. So we're coming onto our hands and knees here. This first one is going to be a bit of a core ab workout as well. Your legs can be together or about hip width apart and you can always adjust once we start and just play around with it, see what feels best, where you feel the most challenged, where you feel it's most appropriate for your body. From here, we are going to tuck our toes under and then hover our knees above the mat. So maybe you're just starting out and you feel like this is challenging enough. So you can just do a few like that. So tap the knees down, lift up, down and lift. But if you're ready to level it up, come with me. We're gonna challenge our core stability as well as our hip flexors. So we lift up and from here, just going to lift one foot off the mat. Everything else stays completely still. Then I place that foot down, repeat to the other side. So we just keep switching between legs. Maybe you feel a bit of a shake. I haven't done these in a while. Let's do one more each side. Keep pressing the floor away with those arms. Spine is neutral, so nice long line, no collapsing. Bring those legs down, very nice. We're gonna go back into our hover, but this time we are going to step our legs back. So it's still bent, but it's a longer line. And then take them back. So one leg, other leg, first leg, second leg changing which leg we're starting with each time. In, in, last one here, in, in. Legs come down, very nice. From there, we're gonna do our abductions, also known as your fire hydrants. So I'm still pushing the floor away with my hands. I've got a slight lift through my abdominals. So I'm gonna try and keep the rest of my body as still as possible, even as my leg is working. I'm just gonna lift that knee to the side and back down. We lift it up and down. So we're abducting the leg. You could even wear your ankle weights for this. Add the band around your feet, especially if you're repeating the workout a couple of times or you feel like you don't have much of a challenge here. So we lift it out and in. Try and reach it a bit further each time. And again, make sure that the rest of your body is staying still so we're not cheating the movement by collapsing into our supporting side. But it's really about that resistance through the working leg. We've got two more here. Lift and lower, very nice. Let's do the same on our other leg. So just check again that you've got that bit of lift through your abdominals, pressing the floor away with our arms as our knee comes out to the side and down. We lift and lower. This is really great for our LSA cones, even just our turnout and glute strength in general. Just a few more. Again, checking that we're not collapsing into our supporting side. We're still pressing the floor away with our arms. You've got this, come on. Just three more. This is two. Last one here. Bring it down, very nice. 
Now here you want to have one of your props nearby. Come down onto your back. We're going to do some développés but in parallel. So I'm going to extend one leg to the sky. Now your other leg can be bent or if you want more of a challenge, you can extend it. It's up to you. So from the top, I'm going to flex my ankle as I lower the leg. Then I'm going to drag it back up towards my body and then peel that foot off the mat as I do a développé, keeping the leg parallel and really feeling that engagement through the quads. So I'm really pulling up the leg, no micro bends, and lower with a flexed foot. We repeat. We extend it to the sky, feeling our toes reaching up like the leg is growing longer. Then we flex and lower. Now this looks really simple, but it can be quite challenging and it's really effective for getting into those quads, those hip flexors. We've got one more in this direction and now we reverse. So we lift it with our flexed foot, then we bend it in, slide it back out. Well done, keep it going. Now the coordination might also feel a bit strange at first, but you'll get the hang of it. So we flex and lift, and when we can't lift any further, we point and bend that leg, extend it back out. Two more like this, and down, last one. Point it down, extend it along the floor and switch legs. So again, you can keep this one extended for a bit of a challenge or bend it in, whatever you prefer. So we développé our opposite leg and flex the foot as we lower. Point and extend, flex and lower. Keep it going. Again, making sure that it's parallel so we don't start turning it out and that we're fully extended through those quads. We reach and lower. Two more here. This is your last one. We hold it at the bottom and reverse. So lift it with a flexed foot, point as we bend it back in. Try and reach a bit further each time. See what your body is capable of. And lower. We're almost there, guys. This is your last one. Extend it along the floor. Very nice. Now, if you want, you can take a quick stretch here. Otherwise, we keep going, grabbing our props. So with these different props, if you're using the ankle weight, obviously, just put it around your ankle. <laughs> If you're using a loop band, you're going to place it underneath one foot so that you have that as an anchor point. Then your other foot is just going to slip in there and I'm going to show you what we're going to do in a second. If you're using a long band, we are going to make a loop at each end. So I'm just tying this one around my foot. And where you tie your second loop will depend on the resistance of your band. So this one is pretty stretchy, not too heavy resistance. So I'm going to make it quite a short loop just so that I have a bit more challenge. But it is totally up to you. So it just looks like this, one around each foot. And if you've got a tail in like this, just make sure it's not in the way that you're not going to trip over it or anything like that. Coming down onto your back. So again, you can keep your legs bent or extended and this will be more challenging if you keep them long. So I'm going to pick up one leg and pull it into my chest. So you can feel that front of the hip working. I'm keeping it parallel and I'm going to that point where I feel the resistance. I'm thinking about pulling my knee towards my shoulder and down. We lift and lower. Bring it in and down. Last one here. Hold it. From there, open that knee out to the side to whatever your point of turnout is. So making sure your opposite glute is staying glued to the mat. 
glued, glued back to center. So it's like a door that's opening up and lift, out and lift. Very nice. So this is exactly what we do in a lot of our développés, carrying that leg to the side. We've got four, three, you've got this, two, one, bring it up and down. Very nice. Let's repeat that to the other side. So our knee bends into our chest, trying to reach to our shoulder and down. We lift and down. We've got a couple more here. This is three and lower. Two, bring it down. Last one here, we hold it and carry it out to the side and back up. Out and up. Very nice. We've got a few more. This is five and lift four. You can do it. Last two here and lift. Last one. Bring it up all the way down. Very nice. So you can place your prop to the side and then just maybe do a quick stretch. Knee to chest if you want. Or a good old figure of four. <laughs> Whatever you need in this moment, you can pause because we have one more exercise left for this. You can use one more prop or you can just use your imagination. <laughs> this next one is really great to do with a yoga block. If you have those because they can be stacked, you can turn it on its side to have different heights. It's a nice way to track your progress and to keep leveling it up as you do these. But there's lots of options. You can get creative so it's not an absolute necessity. For today, I'm using a small Pilates ball. So you want to use something that has a bit of height. It can be a shoe, a book, anything you have on hand. Or again, just imagine that there's something there. <laughs> so I'm going to sit up nice and tall. If you're an absolute beginner and you are struggling to even sit up and extend your hamstrings, then this is not the exercise for you. You can go back to the previous ones and stay tuned for our future workouts and then come back to this one when you're ready. Because before we start this, we want to be able to have our legs fully extended our spine nice and long. You can also do this with your back against the wall or hold a dowel or a broomstick or something behind your back so that you have that tactile feedback. So I'm bringing my legs together, then I'm going to place my props just to the outside of my ankle. Again, sitting up nice and tall. From there, all that I'm going to do is lift my leg over the ball and back. We lift. Bring it back. Now you'll notice there is a slight shifting back of my weight. So it's not this because that's way easier. But there is a slight movement and that's just because of how the psoas attaches to your spine. We talked about it last week. So you'll never be able to prevent that completely. It's just a natural movement that we need to allow. But our intention is to sit up straight so that we don't have a complete slouch and cheat it. So give me four more here. And if you're struggling with the object you chose, you can just grab something even flatter or again, do it without anything and just lift at the height that works for you. This is your last one here. One more, bring it back, very nice. Then of course we get to do that again on the other side. So again, I'm just checking that I'm sitting up nice and tall. Should probably move these out of the way. And then we go again. And this is a good way again to just assess the differences between your two sides. I know my devil pays are way worse <laughs> on this side, which is my left. Keep it going. 
and back. We've got four, three, just two more, you can do it. Back, last one here. Very nice. Take a quick stretch forward. Come back up. This is one of my favorites for the developers, especially as you're trying to get it to 90 because this is basically 90 if you look at the position of the hip. And then as you progress, what you can also do is have two objects. I don't have another high one here. So I'm just gonna put the weight there so that we are progressively lifting it further and further to the side. We're not doing that today, but just so you know, that is an option and we'll probably throw it in some future workouts. So as you stay consistent, I am confident that you will see results, that you will be able to feel yourself getting stronger. You'll be able to get your legs higher. It will feel easier. You won't have that gripping or that tension through the hips or thighs. And there's so much room to grow. So I encourage you to trust the process. If you were struggling with some of these today, so was I. And I want to encourage you to not judge yourself, don't judge where your body is at, but use it as an opportunity to be curious about what's happening in your body. So we're just paying attention and noticing like, hey, this area needs some attention, it needs some strengthening, and that's what we're here for. But it's not a competition, you have nothing to prove and no one to impress. So just use this as a time for personal growth to practice curiosity, to see what your body is capable of. And again, that's going to come with time. So don't try to rush through it. So that was like a full on motivational speech <laughs> that I wasn't planning on. But yes, I've definitely been there of trying to force things or make it happen in what I think the timeline needs to be. And just overall trying to keep control over things that I actually don't have that much control over. So it's going to take the time that it takes and we might as well enjoy it. But thank you so much for joining me on the mat. I hope that you enjoyed. Make sure that you are subscribed so that you can stay up to date with our future workouts. And I will see you back here very, very soon. Whoa.